Hey guys, in this video tutorial I'm going to demonstrate the Dimension Photoshop action. So I'll put a link down to this photo below if you want to follow along in this tutorial. But the way the action works is that you, you start off with your photo, you then trace around your subject and fill it with a colour. You run the action and the Dimension action creates this effect for you automatically. Okay. Uh, in the second example I'll open up this photo and we'll recreate this. And then I'm just going to briefly talk to you about um, combining uh, the dimension action with other seven styles actions. Okay, so before jumping into Photoshop, I will show you a few more examples. Okay, so here's the before, here's the after. I'll also show you how you can um, have it so that part of your subject is popping out um, from. This is called the glass wall here. So you can see part of him is is behind, part is in front. So I'll show you how to do that. All right, let's jump into Photoshop. Okay, so just a reminder that if you want to follow along uh, in this tutorial, just to download this photo below, I'll put the link uh, down there. So there's a few things you need to run through here to make sure uh, your file is set up correctly. We need to load the action brushes. We also need to load the pattern file that was included uh, in the download. So firstly, uh, look into your layer panel, right? And go to this top right-hand corner icon, click on that, Go down to panel options, uh, and down at the bottom here, just make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. I'm just going to drag this back here. Alright, so next go to image mode. Make sure your document is set up in RGB color mode and 8 bit channel is selected. Okay. Next go to image size, right, and check the size of your photo. Now this action will take uh, a few minutes to play back and that length of time uh, is heavily dependent on how big your photo is. So you can see I've actually scaled down the original size of this photo. So if you're following along, uh, scale your photo down to, uh, to a height of around 2100 pixels uh, and that will take about three to four minutes to play back the action. If you're working with photos say over 3,000 pixels or 4,000 pixels, it could take close to five, six minutes to play back, okay? So click OK there. Now what I need to do is load the brushes that were included in the download. So if you just hit B, right, that'll activate the brush tool. Now if you right click anywhere over your photo, that'll bring up the brushes panel. So what we want to do here, you can either load the brushes into your existing stack of brushes or replace all these with the dimension brushes. So I don't need any of these brushes, so I'm just going to click on this icon here and go down to replace brushes, click on that and just select the dimension brushes.abr file. Okay, so there's only really two brushes uh, with this action, but if you don't load them up, you are going to get an error, so just make sure that's done. So when you've loaded up the brushes, uh, Make sure the brush tool is still active and just check that the opacity is at 100%. Okay? So, yeah, just hit B. It must always be at 100% before you run the action. Whenever you load brushes uh, that comes with an action, always make sure it's at 100%. And also make sure that this icon here is turned off. If that's turned on, uh, you are going to get errors. So if you use a tablet uh, a lot for Photoshop, that's most likely going to be turned on. So just make sure when you run an action to turn that off, okay? So now what we need to do is load the patterns that were included in the download. So if you just hit G, or go over to your tool, tools here and click on that icon here, and go down to the paint bucket tool, click on that, and move up to the top here and you'll see there's a drop down menu. Yours by default might be set to foreground. So just click on that and access the patterns here, click on pattern, All right? So click on this arrow, and that will reveal uh, the current uh, patterns that you have loaded. So what you want to do here, again, you can either just uh, load the dimension patterns into this stack or replace them. 
I'm just going to replace them. So you click on this icon and go to replace patterns. Now select the dimension patterns.pat file. Okay. And it'll take a few seconds to load up because that pattern file is quite big. It's about 100 meg. Okay, so there they are there. There are eight different patterns there and they will be our glass patterns we'll use when we play the action. Okay, so that's done. So now what we need to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer. Now this layer must be called brush, all in lowercase letters and no spaces. Okay, you'll get an immediate select error if this uh, is not spelled correctly. So click OK. So you can see the brush layer there. So the idea with the brush layer is that we want to trace around uh, the subject and fill in with a color. Okay. So the way I'm just going to do this is I'm going to hit L on the keyboard. That will access the, uh, the lasso tools here. And I'm just going to go to this magnetic lasso tool. And I'm just going to start tracing around uh, the subject like this. So I'm just clicking and holding down and I'm just going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch me uh, do this. Okay, so there we go. I've just finished uh, tracing around my subject with the uh, magnetic lasso tool. So now what I want to do is fill this selection in with a color. So I need to make sure my brush layer is active. Make sure you don't fill in your selection on the background layer. It must be the brush layer. Okay, so currently my foreground color is black and you can fill your subject in with any color. So let's change it to red. Now the shortcut keys to fill a selection in with the foreground color here is Alt Backspace or Option Backspace. So click that and then you'll fill your subject. Control or Command D to deselect. All right, so I'll zoom out a bit. So there we go, I have the brush layer and I have my selection. All right, so now what we need to do is load the Actions panel. So if we go to Window, Actions, it'll pop up to the side here. Click on this top right hand corner icon and go to Load Actions. Click on the dimension.atn file and it will pop up here. Okay, so when you've loaded up the uh, action, it will come in this folder called dimension. So you twirl that open and there is a few different actions here. Now, all of these actions here, you do not touch. Okay, so I've just put them in a divider just uh, to remind you not to touch any of these in here. I've also got in brackets, don't touch. The only action that you want to play is this top one, dimension. All right, so you click on that and all you need to do is click play. Now, when you click play, you'll get an immediate message, okay? And I'll just read this out. It says, in the next step, use the scale slider to adjust the size of your glass pattern. I've just put a reminder here, uh, make sure you've loaded the dimension patterns file, which we did earlier. Uh, just check back in this video tutorial if you need help with that step. Uh, to select a different glass pattern, click the down arrow to the right of the pattern thumbnail. You can choose from eight glass patterns. Don't adjust any other settings rather than the scale and pattern. When you finish adjusting your settings, click OK to continue. Uh, I've just put a tip here about size and the pattern. I'll talk to you about in a sec. Uh, click continue below to proceed. So when you get this message, okay, uh, click continue. And what will happen? you'll get this layer style window pop up and you can see we have this pattern now generated uh, over our photo and this is one of the patterns that we uh, we loaded up earlier so here this is where you can play around with the scale of your pattern so if I just adjust the scale here you can see that pattern going down you can scale it up all right now you only want to scale down as far as when you begin to see a hard edge form so I'm scaling down here. So now I'm at about 30% uh, of the pattern size and you can see this hard line here. So you don't want to scale that low. So uh, in this case, and this will depend on the size of your photo as well. So I've made these patterns 6,000 by 6,000 pixels. So they're really big. Um, 
So yeah, in this case, 36% of the size fits that well. And you can also scale up to, you know, over 100%, okay? But as you get beyond 100%, what might happen is uh, these lines in between uh, all the shapes, at the edges of all the shapes, they might start to blur out a little bit. It won't be as sharp as having it, you know, at 100% or below. So, you know, maybe push up to 120 or 130% if you like and experiment with that. Uh, and what you can also do is, you've got this pattern thumbnail here. So if you click on this arrow, this is where you can access all the other patterns, okay? So there's eight of them, all right? Uh, and if you've forgotten to load the patterns at this point, you can load them here. So if you run the action and you think, oh, you know, damn it, I forgot to load the patterns, just click on this arrow, click on this icon here, and then go to load patterns, okay? And then they'll just appear in here. All right, so let's run with, let's go for pattern A, and we'll scale this down a bit. Uh, let's try 70%, all right? So when you've done that, you don't want to ch change any other settings. You only want to play around with the pattern here and the scale. Click OK, and then the action will continue to play. Now, in about a minute's time, some of you may get a warning pop-up window. Um, it's not an error, it's just a warning uh, message. And I'll fast forward the video to that message and I'll just show you what to do uh, at that point. So it just says some aspects of the effects cannot be reproduced for later. So if you get this window pop-up, just click on don't show again and click OK. Okay, and that message will never show again. It's not an error, it's just part of what Photoshop needs to do uh, with one of these steps. So, okay, so that's that. So just click on don't show again and it'll never pop up. All right, I'm just gonna fast forward this video and get to the completion of the action. All right, so the action just finished playing back and there's my result. So uh, let's just collapse the actions panel for a moment and look into the layer panel. So the first thing you wanna, you wanna do, and you wanna do this with all uh, of my actions, is once the action is complete, you wanna collapse all these folders that are open. So to do that, the dimension, act, uh, sorry, the dimension folder will already be selected. So you hold down Control Alt or Command Option, and you click on this folder arrow. Click on that, release the keys, and reopen the folder, and everything is collapsed. Okay, so I'll just uh, minimize this folder again. So you've got here the dimension folder that has all the effects. Okay, um, I've also left the brush layer on at the top here. So if you wanted to experiment with a different pattern. Okay, you just uh, delete the dimension folder and the file is all set up to run again. So all you need to do is click on the play on the dimension action and then choose a different pattern. All right, but uh, let's go back into the layers here. All right, so I'll jump around the layer order a bit here uh, and talk to you about what they all do and how they sort of influence the design. So firstly, we'll jump to this uh, layer here in red, it's called main photo subject and I've got in brackets here brush mask. So if I turn this off, you'll see that, that hides our, uh, our subject and all you're left with is this background uh, of, is this background design. Okay, so you can see that uh, all this main photo subject is, it is a selection of, um, I've taken your, the area that you've brushed or you, the, the area that you filled in and I've put this on top of all the other effects, okay? So that your subject sort of sits in front of this glass wall. Now, the reason why I've got in brackets here brush mask, okay? Is that if I um, start brushing black, so if I just hit B, if you hit B, um, it'll automatically select the soft brush that was uh, included in the brushes that you've loaded up, all right? So if you start brushing black onto this mask, what that's gonna do, it's gonna hide uh, your subject, okay? So that, you know, it looks like part of him is coming out from this glass wall, okay? And you can see this part here is sort of in front of him. So anywhere you brush black onto this mask, it's gonna hide your subject. Anywhere you brush white will reveal it. So um, if you wanna switch between black and white, you just hit X on the keyboard. You can see over here, as I hit X, it's flipping around. So I can flip to white and sort of brush some of that away, flip back to black, just to fine tune it, okay? Uh, now, what we might check out now is down the bottom here, 
uh, we've got this layer here called Light and Shadows. Now, I've added this layer here. If I turn this on and off, you can see that there. This is uh, more for if your photo has quite a dark background. And I'll demonstrate this more in this example here. Okay, you can see the original photo, what's well, printed's got a black background, and then you use this layer here to sort of um, bring out a lot more of the detail in this pattern. Uh, but at the moment, what I want to do is, uh, you can see here, this guy's jump is like a black or a really dark blue. But you can see this glass pattern is quite light, and I want that to be, to be a bit darker. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to select the mask on this uh, layer here. Hit B, grab a brush tool, make sure black is my active color. And I'm just going to brush that away. Okay, so just so that it's a bit darker around there. All right. Now, something else that might be influencing how uh, bright this glass pattern is, is this soft glow layer here. In and I've got in brackets here opacity. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that there how um, it just adds like this general uh, light, I guess, over everything. So again, you could brush into the mask to control uh, where you want it a bit darker, or you can just lower the overall opacity. Okay, so you can see here I've got in brackets opacity, and that's just reminding you just to play around with that layer through its opacity. So currently it's at 50%, I could drop that down a little bit. Let's just say 30%, something like that. Okay. Um, let's just go, we'll quickly go back at the top here and I'll talk about these four layers. So overall sharpening, pretty simple. Um, you probably won't see that as I turn it on and off, but add some fine sharpening over your entire design. If you want to do the sharpening at the ends, just um, hide that layer for the moment or delete it. Uh, adjust overall colors, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, these two layers here, uh, overall, overall contrast opacity and overall contrast two opacity. So the way these work is that you just um, yeah, adjust the opacity of this layer, so it's at 0%, and as I increase that, you can see contrast coming into the design. So there's that one, and this one below is just a different style of contrast. So as I increase that, you can see there's a different style, so you can play around with those. Uh, this folder here, color options. So if you go inside this folder, I've just set up uh, 10 color options for you. Might zoom out a bit. Uh, and the way these work is that you just turn on the visibility for that folder, okay, just like that, and it will apply a different color. Now you can combine them together, so I could turn on this one and turn on this one if I want. Or you can play around with the opacity of these. So let's say I just want 50% of this color, I would hit 5 on the keyboard, that will change that to 50%. Or I can uh, click on the word opacity up here and drag that around, that will adjust the uh, the opacity of that. All right. So uh, the reason why I've added this adjust overall colors is that you know if you've turned on a few of these, you can double click on this layer here. <coughs> Excuse me. Double click on that, and you can play around with these handles here, and you can kind of just fine tune uh, the colors a little bit. Okay. Uh, and don't forget, you can change, you can target different uh, tonal ranges. So you've got the mid tones shadows and highlights. So if you want to play around with the shadow color, uh, you could yeah, select shadows and you know add a bit of red into the shadows or yellow. So just play around with that. Okay. Now, this folder here, light spectrum. So if I turn that on and off, so what you can see is that you've got these colored um, yeah, light spectrums running through the edges of all these shapes. So if you turn that off, Okay, you're just going to be left with the original colors of your photo. Turn it on. Uh, yep, yeah. it creates those light spectrums. Now, before I jump into the light color spectrums, I actually might jump back into the color options because I just want to add more of a green um, tone to this design. So I'm just going to click down uh, these color options here, and there should be a green option. Here it is, here, color option five. I'm just going to use this. I'm going to lower the opacity down a bit. And I'm going to use about 45% opacity of that layer, and I might adjust this one again. I'm uh, just going to use about 40% of that layer. Okay, it looks a bit better. 
All right, let's jump back into the light color spectrum. So I'll twirl open that folder, and we've got two folders here. So this top one here is called light refractions. Now if I turn that on and off, it really depends on um, your photo. These will be a lot more uh, visible on uh, you know, photos with dark backgrounds. Uh, but you can see, as I turn it on and off here, you can see up the top right hand corner here, you can see those color light refractions there. Uh, now if you select this mask here on the folder, if you hold down shift and click on that mask, what that'll do, that'll disable the mask, so it'll just make the light refractions pop out a lot more. So, um, and generally these will generate across the entire design, but just in this example it seems to have only generated up the top here, so I'll just hold down shift to release that, um, that'll reveal a bit more. Okay, so we'll go inside that folder and there are a few different layers here. You've got the light refraction layer here. Now if you select that and start moving it around, you can see the light refractions there. So you can, yeah, move those around if you want, put those in a different position. Okay, this layer here, light refraction color, that is, yeah, just the color of the light refractions. You don't need to change this layer at all. So let's leave, leave that. Uh, this layer here, change refraction color. If you double click on this box, uh, you use the hue handle here and that will change the color of uh, the light refractions, okay? Now, if you also, if you go down to the light refractions layer here, if you hold down shift on this layer as well to disable the mask, that's another way you can increase the visibility of the light refraction. So you can see, as I turn that on and off, I can see that there. Another way to increase the visibility is if you just select the light refractions folder, and hit Control or Command J. Okay, that basically, yeah, all that's doing is duplicating all those pixels, so uh, they're a lot more visible. Uh, what I might do is actually, I'll I'll do that, but I'll lower the opacity down this folder just a little bit, and I might try and disable this mask here. Okay, so it's got a lot more uh, light refraction color coming through. Okay, I'll keep that. Uh, this one here, Shape, Edges, Color Spectrum, if you turn this one on and off, uh, that just gives the colors a bit more of a boost around the edges of all those shapes. Okay. Uh, if you go inside that folder there, you've just got your Shape, Edges layer there. Okay, you turn it on and off, uh, and again, just the Spectrum Color. Okay. Uh, I might actually, looking at it now, this might be still a bit too strong. I'll lower that down to 30%. All right, so moving on down, we've got this folder here, Shapes Gloss. Uh, if you turn that on and off, it's very subtle, but it adds these little, um, so you can see there, that little spot there, so turn it on and off. Just little hints of gloss running throughout the shapes, all right? You go inside that folder there, there's just two layers uh, you can play around with there. Uh, again, if you want to increase the visibility of those, hit Control of Command J on the folder. Okay. This folder here, Master Edge Glow Brightness Controller. Uh, it's a long name, but if you go inside there, what you want to do is double click on this layer here, and that will bring up the levels properties. Now, what you want to do here is play around with these handles. So if I drag this handle here to the right, you can see that, that has darkened up uh, areas of our pattern. Now, if you drag that inwards to the left, you can see that is starting to brighten up random areas of our pattern. So, play around with that. By default, I've just lightened them up a little bit, but you might prefer it darker. Uh, I might just keep it about there. And if you drag this one, this one's a bit more sensitive. If you drag that inwards to the right, it will make it a lot darker. Uh, and left. Uh, might just keep it... Keep it about there. Okay, so that's that folder. Uh, moving down, this folder here, additional edge glows. If you turn that folder on and off, you can see that adds a lot of different uh, highlights. And if you go inside here, um, there's a few different layers. You can just play around with turning those on and off and seeing how that uh, influences your design. So if you think that's too much, you can just turn those off. Uh, I might actually just lower the opacity down to uh, let's say 60% with that one. So the best way, to, the quickest way to figure out what these layers are doing is just turn on the visibility for them. Okay, some will appear uh, much more visible than others. And I also, I always like to experiment with duplicating layers. So just 
uh, select one, control command J, okay? And then what I like to do is hold down control Z or command Z and that will just um, undo and redo what you've just done. So you just go, basically just get a preview of the before and after. Okay? Uh, that's that photo. All right, so this layer here, edge brightness controller, if you double click on this, and you play, play around with this lightness handle here. If I drag this to the left, you see what that's done, it's taken a lot of brightness out of the edges. So if I drag it to the right, you'll see those edges start to get brighter. Just like that. So left, right, so you see that there. Uh, so yeah, play around with that. Now this layer here, background color tints, if you just turn this on, what that'll do, it'll apply a tint over your background. So if you just double click on this colored box here, you can uh, change the color, all right? Now you can see that it's not influencing our subject here, it's because it's below our subject layer. So if you want to add a tint, this blue tint over your entire design, just move that to the top, and then that will now influence your subject as well. Okay, uh, so this layer here, I briefly went over this, but it's a soft glow layer, so if you turn that on and off, you can see it there. It really it does a good job of filling out the shadows. Okay. Again, uh, control that. Turn it on and off. And if there's any areas that you prefer without it, control it uh, by brushing black into the mask to hide it. Okay. This layer here shapes contrast. I've got to practice opacity. So by default, the opacity is at 20%. So if I turn it to 100%, then zero. You can see um, quite a big difference there. So I'll start at zero, and I'll slowly increase it so you can see what that does. So it just, yeah, it adds contrast into the shapes pattern. Uh, but I generally like this low. In this case, I think it looks good at, at zero percent. So I'm just gonna turn that off. Okay, we went over this one here, light and shadows. Uh, so I might actually lower the opacity of this down to Let's go 60%, okay? And this one here is another contrast, uh, a shaped contrast layer. If I turn it on and off, you can see that there, I'll increase the opacity to 20%. So as I increase that, you see it's just a different style of contrast into uh, random areas of the pattern, okay? And then this one here is the dimension background. So if you turn that off, that basically just hides that entire glass look. And all you're left with is uh, a lot of outlines, um, the color spectrum here, okay? And something else I like to experiment with is moving the light color spectrums above the main subject. So then when you get, you get these subtle uh, lines uh, that run over the top of your subject, which I think looks uh, really cool. Uh, I might just check Yeah, I might just, so all I'm doing here is I'm selecting the mask on that light color spectrum folder and I've got my brush, my black brush out. I'm just going to hide this little bit of purple, it's just distracting me a bit, okay? So don't forget that I put masks on absolutely everything, so you can control the visibility of that layer or folder, all right? Now where you can get more creative with this action is uh, using the mask on the dimension folder. So I'll just collapse that. So if you brush black onto the dimension folder, that's gonna hide uh, everything within that folder and it's gonna fall back onto your original background. So you can create these blends between you know, your original background um, to the dimension background. So for example, if I select the mask here, and if I hit B, and if you use the left and right square brackets, that'll change the size of the brush, okay? Uh, black is my active color because I want to hide it. So if I start brushing now, what that's going to do, it's basically hiding um, everything within that folder, okay? You can see black in the mask there, and that's just falling down onto our original background, all right? Now, a little tip is that if, if you want to use that method, and you can see what it's done, uh, the colors don't really match. So what you might want to do is just grab the color options uh, folder and move that outside of the dimension folder. So that way it's influencing our background layer as well, okay? 
So I've got that. Uh, so what I might do, I'll open up an example which better demonstrates how you could use uh, this uh, method of brushing on the dimension folder mask. So I'm just going to open that up now. Okay, so here is a design I just quickly created with this action. And you can see here that the um, dimension effect sort of starts, you know, on the ground here and intersects through our subject. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hide a few masks here. Uh, actually, what I'll do, I'll, I'll just reset these masks and I'll just rebuild this from scratch. So this was, um, apart from the color options here, um, this was the default result of the action. So this was the original photo. Uh, that was the area that I filled in. And that was my result. Okay. So what I wanted to do here is firstly, I wanted to hide his legs behind this glass wall. So I jumped to the mask of the main photo subject layer, uh, grabbed my black brush. Okay. And all I did was just brush over his legs. So now his legs have gone, disappeared behind this glass wall, okay? But next what I wanted to do, I wanted this glass wall to start up higher. So I went to the dimension folder mask, again, my black brush, and I just started brushing away to a point, um, or to the area where I wanted the glass wall to begin. Okay, just like that, so now, um, yeah, it's given the appearance that it's starting up here. Uh, and then what I wanted to do is um, create a bit more of a smoother blend between the original photo and this glass wall. So again, to B, um, and I just lowered my brush opacity. So with the brush out, I just hit, say, 3 on the keyboard. That'll lower the opacity down to 30%. Whoops, make sure black is my active color because I want to hide it. And I'm just brushing away... You can see it's creating much more of a gradual blend into the into the background here. Okay, uh, so that's simple. Um, I'll hide these masks so you can see before and after. Hold down Shift, click on those masks. Okay, and then uh, the area that I brushed onto the uh, the main photo there. Okay, close that. However, for this particular example, uh, I don't want that blend between the original photo and the dimension effect, so I'm just going to hide this mask here, and that will bring back the original uh, design. So I'll just put this color option back inside here, okay, and let's check out the before and after. All right, this is the before, there's the after. All right, so I'm just going to uh, move on to the second example. Okay, I've got the second example open now, and you can see I've already traced around my subject and filled it with color. So there's the original photo. Here's my brush layer with my selection. So I'm just going to twirl open the actions panel, click play on the dimension action, and I know what all this means. I'm going to click continue, and all I'm going to do here is select a new pattern. Uh, let's go. Let's go this one here. We'll leave the size. Uh, around 70%, percent i are going to click OK, all right, uh, I'm just going to fast forward the video to the result. Okay, the action's all done, and I'm actually really happy just with this default result, so I can probably just leave it like that, um, but I'll go in and make some changes so that, just so that you get familiar with these layers. So I'm going to uh, collapse the actions panel, uh, control, alt or command option, click on this folder arrow, release the keys, reopen it, that'll collapse all the folders. So the first thing I want to do is jump to the uh, our main photo layer, select the mask, make sure black is our active color, and I'm just going to brush away the lower half of his body here, okay? Um, I'm going to hit X, that'll flip it to white, I just want to reveal, bring this part back here, okay? X, back to black, and I'm just going to blend in his shoulders a bit with his background, something like that, okay? Now you can see here our original background is pretty much pitch black, and when I turn on the dimension folder, with it's kind of filled it all, uh, well it's lightened it, up, lightened it up a lot more. So, and, that, and that's coming from this layer here, uh, Light and Shadows, which I talked about earlier. So if I turn it on and off, you can clearly see that I'm working. 
So when you turn that off, you lose a lot of edge detail. Turn it on, kind of brings it back in. So uh, again, you can control this through the mask or just lower the opacity of the layer. I'm just gonna lower the opacity down uh, to about 50%. And then I'm just gonna grab the mask, I'm gonna select the mask, hit B. I'm just gonna brush away uh, this area down here. I want this to be pretty much well, a lot darker. Uh, and you can see this glow uh, emitting here from around our subject. Uh, again, that's from the soft glow layer, so we turn it on and off. Okay, I'm just going to lower the passage this down to about 30%, something like that. Uh, I'm going to grab the light color spectrum, so I'm going to go inside, I'm going to preview, uh, I'm going to hold down shift and click on this mask. Okay, it's not really adding too much more, uh, but I'm going to hold down shift on this one here. Okay, I might just move this around. Okay, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it where it is. Uh, I'll try to duplicate this folder. See what that looks like. It's not really doing much, so I'll just leave it how it is. I'm just going to move this folder above my main subject. Okay, so then we got a lot of we got all the light spectrum sort of intersecting our subject. I'm just going to select the mask here. Make sure black is my active color. Brush away any uh, any details that I don't want. Maybe it's a bit too much here. Okay, it's looking cool. All right, I'm going to jump into the color options folder. Well, that looks good. Nine and ten both look good. Let's go for nine. I'm just going to lower the opacity down. Just use a little bit of that. And I am done. I'm pretty happy with that. So just a couple minutes work and my design is complete. So let's check out the before and after. There's the original photo. There is, uh, there is the dimension effect. So lastly, I'll quickly talk to you about um, combining the dimension effect with other seven styles actions. Okay, so you don't um, just need to use the dimension action on you know a plain stock photo. You can actually run um, you know other seven styles actions, create cool effects on your photos, and then add the dimension action on top of that. Okay, and it's really simple. So uh, let me just open up uh, a couple of files here. So I have this photo here. Okay, and I've just I'll open up the original photo. So this was my original photo and I ran uh, one of my actions called Fracture and this was the result that I got, okay? I'll put a link down to the Fracture action below so you can check that out. Okay, and all I did after I run the action, I saved out my image, all right? I'll just close it for a sec. Okay, so I saved out my, my design as a JPEG and I've reopened it, okay? So here it is here. So now if I wanted to run the dimension action, all I need to do is go through that process of um, creating my brush layer. So layer, new layer, brush, okay. And all I need to do is, you know, fill in the area uh, that I want to have the uh, dimension effect appear around. So, uh, you know, I'm doing a really quick job here just to demonstrate, so so there we go. Uh, and all I need to do now is load up the uh, actions panel, click play, all right, click continue there, and choose a pattern, and click OK, all right? Um, and I'll, I'll fast forward the video and get to the result again. All right, and there's the result. So I could do, uh, again, jump to my main photo layer, I could blend his feet in, maybe a little bit more with the background, um, I could also brush away the original um, or the dimension effect altogether and then blend that onto uh, the fracture, uh, the original fracture design. I can turn off these, not those two, can I turn off this one? I might just leave that. Uh, and yeah, so you can apply this effect, uh, like I said, to any of my actions. I've got over a hundred different effects to choose from, so heaps of different um, cool designs you can come up with when applying yeah, the dimension action to um, your designs. 
So guys, that's it. I'll put a link down to the support page below. So if you're having any troubles with the action, firstly check back on this video tutorial and go to the start and make sure your file is set up correctly. Okay, and if you're still stuck, jump to the support page and have a look to at the uh, the solutions to the errors mentioned there. Okay, and if you're still stuck, uh, you can contact me via that support page and I will help you out. Uh, but if not, have a good time using the effect. Thanks.